All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. Um, as you can obviously tell from the title, the thumbnail or probably the screen right now, a new MATLAB video today. Um, today, I want to walk you through the AI chat playground by MathWorks. The way we're going to access this is we first have to log in. As you can see in the top right corner, I'm already logged in. I'm going to go straight to the community tab and we're going to go to AI chat playground here at the top. This will open the AI chat playground and we can immediately get started. So the way we're going to use this is pretty simple. And one of the reasons I really, really like this is because you can get a code output and immediately execute the code on the right hand side, which is super, super awesome. One of the things I want to make you aware of though, is that as you can read right here, everything after June 2021 in terms of data or the knowledge is not accessible through this model, which coincides with the fact that this is a chat GPT 3.5 model and not GPT-4. So just be aware of that. And then obviously, as I always tell students or other people using AI in general, whether it's about marketing sales or engineering applications it's just the human in the loop is super super important so whenever you have a code output make sure to be very very critical of what you see execute the code and really see if that's actually what you wanted in the first place so does it um serve the purpose of what you wanted um from the beginning so be be aware of that so even though it could have been the jet gpt4 model or gpt4 model in this case um always be um, I would say cautious of what the output looks like. Don't trust it immediately. That goes for CFD results, for FEA results, as well as for AI results in this case. All right. Um, one of the things we can do is, which is really nice, is as you can see, they suggest already some prompts. So for example, create a line plot that displays multiple sets of X and Y data. So we're going to execute this. It only takes a couple of seconds and you can see the code output. We can immediately run it. And as you can see on the right side, it takes only a couple of seconds and it will be executed right here. And one of the things we can do is we can comment, we can uncomment, and we have a couple of it's a very minimalistic functions, which is super useful. And we have follow-up prompts. So once we executed the prompt, the AI chat playground will come up with other prompts that we could use um, to maybe optimize the code. So how can I customize the line styles? Can I add markers to the data points in the line plot? And is it possible to save the line plot as an image file? You can click all of these and then basically um, it triggers some kind of ideation in your brain um, to come up maybe with uh, come up with own ideas or maybe optimize the code along the way. All right, one of the things we wanna do now, we wanna clean this thing. So either you can clean the left side, which is cleaning the chat, you can clean only the right side, or you can clean both sides. So we're gonna clean the chat and the script. We're gonna confirm this, both is clean. And one of the things I wanna show you is maybe going to um, the um, 12 Steps to Navia Stokes course from Lorena Barber. And one of the things we do now is copying this maybe, the 1D linear convection equation. We're gonna copy it. We're going to paste it right here as a prompt and we're not saying implement it in python but implement it in matlab so we have a text instruction on how to implement it and maybe if um, the gpt model gets it maybe we get a plot out of this as you can see plot the solution is already defined right here so i'd say just execute it and let's see what comes out of this as you can see one the linear convection equation it's kind of a a nice plot that you could see. And then obviously you could follow up um, with a couple of other questions. So for example, sometimes the pro it gives you prompts, but sometimes the suggested prompts maybe don't give you the solutions. For example, let's say we haven't defined the variables. We were just interested in what the code actually does. Um, then for example, a follow up prompt of what does the value C do? It wouldn't give you any reasonable answers because it doesn't know what C is. But let's see what, um, what this is um, giving us. Maybe just trying it. How does changing the C value, uh, changing the C value affect the solution? And as you can see, if the C is positive, we, the wave propagates in the positive X direction. If C is negative, in the negative direction, and so on and so forth. Again, please make sure that if you have an output, just don't trust it immediately. Maybe give it a try yourself. Change C in this case, and then see how the wave um, moves. And then maybe also use the plot function to see how this can be um, used to be basically optimize your own code. We're going to clean both sides again. And one of the last things I want to show, and then basically we're almost done with this short demo is we're going to clean both sides. We're going to confirm. And I have a random repository about a CFD code open right here. So for example, let's say you're a student and you want to check out a code. Maybe you don't know what this means because this looks rather complicated for someone who is new. So I'm going to copy this right here. We're going to put it in the prompt. And then we're going to say at the very top, please explain the following code snippet to me, colon. Then we just execute and let's see what it's gonna tell us. It takes a couple of seconds. Okay, it, what it tells us is because we have the comments here as well. So it assumes already that we have implemented two finite volume methods, FTCC, uh, FTCS, sorry, and um, basically first order upwind for convection and FTCS for diffusion. And it gives you a couple of points, explanations. And now what's gonna be interesting is if I click on this prompt, how are the constants C and D determined in the code? 
that's going to be interesting. I, as you can see, what I said, what I basically assumed is the constant C and D are not explicitly determined within the code. It basically means you have to kind of go back to the code and really see how it has been defined. And obviously, if you scroll up, um, and this person here um, from the code has done it very nicely, so they have it as a comment defined, like what does each of these variables that they introduced mean? Um, some pros and cons. Some pros, definitely, as I said in the beginning, is that on the left side, you can ask your prompt on the right side, you can execute the code. Some cons in general is I feel that a lot of students will only use AI in the future to maybe do the homework, do their assignments, write their thesis and so on and so forth. So I want you to be very, very aware that some of the AI output um, is definitely not the ultimate solution. So always make sure to maybe question the output, as I said, and make sure that always the human in the loop or maybe the student in the loop is always kind of um, involved here and make sure that um, some changes are being taken care of. Maybe there's some optimal ways to optimize the code. And again, it's kind of outdated, how I would, how I would call it. Um, so always make sure that maybe check your solutions again. Maybe there's some more, more optimal versions. Maybe there's some kind of state-of-the-art solutions that maybe also make your code a little bit faster. So again, don't rely on the solution. One of the pros definitely is very minimalistic user interface. You can just run the code um, and kind of prototype very, very quickly, which I really, really like. And then again, uh, I think there's not so many cons, I would say it. And um, you can use it for debugging, co code explanation, coming up with ideas. And the way I would basically say it is like the 80-20 principle. So 80% is mostly maybe ideation phase. And then the last 20% is really you um, who's watching the video, maybe you in the loop who's kind of tweaking the code, making sure that the output is adapted to what you actually need, what the objective of your maybe thesis is, the project. I hope that covers it. It was a rather quick video, but I think this is really, really exciting to see what um, MathWorks is working on at the moment. And there's a lot of things they will be working on in the future. And I'm really, really excited to see uh, what's coming out of this. And yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. Maybe you have tried it yourself already. Maybe let me know in the comments what you like and maybe what you dislike of the AI chat playground and how you potentially um, would use it for other use cases. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.